Welcome to 30 Minutes with HR, your premier human resource show for employers and employees. Today, we are discussing strategic human resource management for organizational success. As you already know, 30 Minutes with HR is a partnership program between KUSI Consulting and the Association of African Universities. When we come back, we will introduce our special guest. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Everybody wants to be the best at what they do for the people they're doing it for. That's why, after 13 years of providing you with top-notch healthcare nationwide, the market leader in the private health insurance industry is going the extra mile for you. Instead of hopping from pharmacy to pharmacy, now you get your prescription drugs delivered straight to your doorstep. We will restock your chronic medication on the regular so you don't have to stress to keep track. We provide on-site clinics that offers you professional medical consultants from the comfort of your office. Enjoy these amazing benefits and so much more by signing on to Nationwide Medical Insurance today. Call us on 0800-222-222 or email us at info at nationwidemh.com. Nationwide, we go the extra mile so you don't have to. Join the healthcare family. Welcome back to 30 Minutes with HR. Today we are discussing strategic human resource management for organizational success. And we are joined by Dr. Hazel Berard Emwa. She is a seasoned human resource professional. She's an author and she's also a lecturer. So welcome to our set, Dr. Hazel. Thank you, Rita. Good to, see you. good to see you too. I'm so excited to have you here on our set today. Same. <laughs> Excellent. Are you ready for today's discussion? Yes, I am. So, as we already know, I think um, the the role of human resources has gone through a lot of transformation over the years. And initially, human resource we were more um, it's it was a, a function that was it, it was in the background, right? So we led from behind, advising line managers, giving advice to employees. But now, human resource has taken a more strategic, operational, and administrative role. So what we are discussing today is more about the, the, strategic, um, the strategic side of HR. So tell us a bit about the strategic side of HR. Thank you, Rita. So if you think about it, it's in two forms. Okay. Human resource management in one form, and strategy in one form. So strategy across Various functions, the same thing. Okay. Strategy for supply, for finance, for marketing, for commercial, for IT, name it, it's the same thing. Okay. So you apply the same thinking of how to plan, how to design, how to focus, how to project into the future in the capacity of a HR person. So HR leading from the front now, as you rightly alluded to in terms of the transition from the back to the front, is about being in the boardroom and being part of the team that thinks about the future of the business. Exactly. Future of the business spans from a year to three years, usually for strategy thinking, right? So how does HR start that conversation with the team and ensure that from every aspect of the business, they are in there to support them in thinking about the human capital of the business in terms of the numbers, okay. capability, and what development plans are required to make them able to deliver on the business plan. Business plans for companies range from um, profitability targets to winning share in the market, right? So how does HR contribute to that agenda in making sure that at any point in time across supply, marketing, commercial, IT, finance, legal, all the various functions, they are the right people in the right numbers, with the right thinking, the right behavior to deliver on the business plan. Secondly, HR will drive the culture of the company in terms of the ways of working. So what are the shifts that are required in terms of people behavior, okay. people thinking, and how to collaborate and work interdependently to deliver on the business agenda. So in a nutshell, if you want to describe strategic human, human resource management, that's what it is. You're thinking human capital with the strategy behind it to make it work. Exactly. Exactly. I was actually, um, we were having a discussion at the office the other day regarding the role of human resource business partners, right? And I think that's why that role was actually created. Exactly. Because HR, you're not just there to be a face. It's more than just a department. You're actually there to help position the 
organization for exactly. growth. So I, I like that you mentioned that. Human resource, our role is literally like, I look at HR as an organ within the body. So without your heart, without your brain, you don't really get to function, right? So HR cannot be successful, obviously, without working with other departments, right? So can you tell us a little bit about what other departments within an organization can HR position themselves with to be able to deliver on strategies and position the, the company for growth? I would say every department. So depending okay. on the company you work for and how they're structured, the end-to-end -end processes would define the structure of the, of the business in terms of the department, so every okay. function. So HR has a role across all the various departments to work with. That's from side to side, all the functions from start to okay. delivering of service or a good. And from a human capital perspective, hierarchically, from top to bottom, every employee, each has to engage with them to be able to have the heart and the mind of the people, to be able to speak to them, collaborate with them, and then work to deliver on company objectives by engaging them behind the common vision of the company. Remember I said to you, the HR director, the HR head, sits in a strategy meeting with colleague um, execs who are leading the various business vision, plannings. Exactly. So this HR director now takes that vision and begins to influence every member of the company through HR business partners who would work with them through other centers of expertise when it comes to reward or capability or industrial relations, etc., to be able to ensure that everybody is really behind the same vision. So HR works with every department in the company. Now, outside the company also there's collaboration that's required. For example, the labor department, the unions, these are two critical um, exactly. parties or associations that we have to work with. Definitely. Plus other HR platforms to be abreast with current trends, speak to current situations, learn from others and improve your uh, ways of working in the company. So HR has a strategic role in making sure that there's collaboration within and without that company. It's interesting you mentioned unions because um, when I worked at uh, the last company where I was actually HR director, we had about seven unions and trades. And it was really important to manage those relationships effectively, right? Because the unions represent the employees. Absolutely. And you represent the employees, but then you also represent the employees. So I think having, are you, are you pro-union or are you, <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about that? We can talk about unions. Yeah? Um, okay. It's interesting that I talk about unions on this show because when I was in my three previous jobs, I actually helped the company form a union. Wow. Reason being that the law talks about the fact that the en employer should not prohibit the formation of a union okay. or prohibit any individual from joining a union or prohibit the activities of a union. And so as an HR person, you can be an enabler exactly. to ensure the union is properly formed exactly. and compliant with the law and collaborates with the business as a business partner yes. in delivering the company objectives. Once upon a time, also I worked in a company where we actually got the union to help with job evaluation. Wow. It's a matter of partnering with them for them to understand. The union are important business partners of a company. Once they understand what's going on and they understand their role and their contribution, you can maximize exactly. whatever they get out of the union because they have a sense of pride and belonging for being in the company. That's why they fight positively to protect the workforce in order to foster their interests and make sure they deliver in their contribution towards the company. So unions are a positive... Yes. Um, society to work with in the company, a positive association to have amongst the employees is how you just engage you them. To deal with them. The key word is engaging exactly. them. Exactly. You know, once you engage them well, it's actually very fun to work exactly. with. Exactly. And I definitely agree with you 100% because I think a lot of organizations would cringe when they hear unions, but I actually don't think we have enough unions here, you know, especially because employees don't necessarily always know their rights and it's the unions, you know, I mm -hmm. think is their role to be able to make sure that the employees are treated fairly. So that's, that's a great point. We like to believe that the role of human resource is just as vital as having an accounting department. You have someone there monitoring the in and outs of, of the finances. Um, and I think HR's role, obviously, is to also monitor the people and make sure that they're productive, right? So wh how would you how would you describe that in terms of, of is it as critical as having a, an accounting department within your, your organization? I dare say so. I'd say the finance department, the account department holds the purse, HR holds the people. People and purse, they both have to they collaborate to get things happening. So they have equal importance in the organization. I think they're very vital.
Nice. They go together. Yeah. Now, you know this is coming. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so, sure what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so Dr. Hazel is actually also HR director at Guinness Ghana. And you recently, I mean, you are doing amazing work. Thank you. You know, for Guinness Ghana. And recently I learned that you actually um you have made a significant change with some of the the policies there so would you and i'm sure you know exactly which policy i'm talking about i know so can you tell us a little bit i just want to know how easy or challenging it was for you to do that because i think when it comes to changing policies it's not always it's not always very easy and what departments did you work with to to get that to happen okay so it's a family policy right yes. about maternity and paternity yes. leave and um it gladdens my heart that I work in a company where these things are easier to manage. So in the UK, the law has been passed to have paternity leave and maternity leave extended. And Guinness, Gan Guinness Ghana Breweries belongs to Diageo, the Diageo yes. Group, which is headquartered in the UK. So in London, they championed the change of policy to make sure that we have family policy modified to suit maternity and paternity needs of young um, parents or parents who just had babies. So the whole idea was, if it's been done in the UK, it can be done in Ghana. Yeah, exactly. And the easier route to have used was to round drop in the executive, um, the board. So it was a matter of just presenting the proposal with the support of Above Market being headquartered in the UK to say we want to do this in Ghana. And we had the executive chairman of our board quickly approve it. We had wow. other members of the board quickly rally behind it. Wow. So it just was done in it less than worked. 24 hours. Wow. We were able to put out the announcement that we had given 26 weeks for maternity leave for a young mother and then four months paternity, not parting leave <laughs> for young men to, to bond with their young children and be able to have some support for their mother who's just given wow. birth to one of a child or several babies. That is yeah. just, that's phenomenal. It's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing. has the number of, of employees or the number of job seekers that apply at, at Guinness Ghana shot up it because has. of this? I can imagine. It has because we did two things. We put it on our um, society, I mean our organizational LinkedIn page. It was on my LinkedIn page yes. and I had more than 8,000 viewers. Wow. So many wow. Um, messages in there, CVs were just flying through. So yeah. it's been interesting exciting. Um, from an EVP perspective, I think it puts Guinness Ghana in a very strong lead Definitely. in terms of care for employees, celebrating life, um, adding value and meaning to family, and just making sure employees are the heart of the company. Exactly. And it shows that we really care for employees. So exactly. I think it's been extraordinary and absolutely critical for every employee, and it's and, been celebrated. That's the role of HR, though. You know, it's like you have to look at the policies that are not really working for the employees. I mean, that's six months, right, for a new mom. Yeah. to be home with your yeah. newborn and a, m a whole month for a dad to also be home with, with the newborn as well. Yes. So I can just imagine that how excited the, the employees are. So now, yeah, I'm coming to work for... <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to work for getting... I am, I am. <laughs> no, I think that's, that's actually really good. Yeah. Um, so I hope you're enjoying this conversation. We are going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hotel East Legon, where every stay is unique. Welcome. 
welcome to Adanze Travels Product Knowledge Series. And I'm excited to talk to you about our FIT tour service, where you get the opportunity to customize the product to your taste. And with that, we take your details, your destination you want to go, the date you want to travel. We're able to do it to suit your budget. So you don't need to worry about breaking the bank when you are traveling with this kind of service. You can visit us as the details are on the screen, as you see, or you can call us on the numbers showing on the screen. Let's plan your trip for you. And you know with Adansi, we always let you feel the beauty of life. Adansi Travel feels life's beauty. And we're back. I hope you are enjoying today's show. We are discussing strategic human resource management with Dr. Hazel Berard Emwa. She is a seasoned human resource professional. She's an author and she's a lecturer. So I mean, I just you you had like the busiest woman in HR. I am so serious. I turn and it's like Dr. Hazel is doing a lecture and I'm actually in a couple of WhatsApp groups that you're a part of and you recently spoke about work-life balance, you know, which I thought was, was really amazing. Great information for Thank us to you. take away. So just, I mean, tell us a little bit about what more to expect. What are you working on? What should we look forward to? I think I'm a very spontaneous woman. Um, everything that comes to my mind, I think about, I process information and I make my own ideas. Um, I think it's part of school when you get to a certain level of education, when you process information, you come up with your own theory. Yes. So um, Ghana employers asked me to speak on work-life balance a couple of weeks ago, and HR Network asked me to do the same thing. So last week I was at Spill, okay. um, and at Spill, the theme transition from work-life balance to just balance. Because if you think about it, we have only one life, which I exactly. spoke about, exactly. and we only have 24 hours in a day, and we have seven days a week, so we don't have enough time to do other stuff apart from being at work. So how do you balance your family life, your private life, your hobbies, your other things to really make you grow? Like Ghana, we like church, we like religion, we like faith, we like working out, we like cooking, we like sports, we like extracurricular activities. We like having fun, exactly. girls, girls, boys, boys are chilling and having fun. How do you balance that with your working life? And considering commuting to work, given a country where traffic is a reality, some people commute for four hours a day before oh, they get to and gosh. from work. Okay. So four hours plus eight hours of work is 12 hours. What time do you have to sleep, to recreate, to spend time with family, to do church, faith, anything else, work out and then be healthy? Wow. So balance is my new theme and I'll balance my life as well because I have a bit of imbalance. <laughs> Same with here. All Guilty. the things that I have to be doing, um, there's a bit of imbalance, but I'm working towards having more balance. Yeah. Good, good. I think it's very important. It's something that I'm Absolutely. working on as well. I think I'm always work, 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 and how, how do you turn it on and off no sometimes? Problem. So yeah. it's not easy. Absolutely. But um, yeah, so is there, so what, what recent changes, I think in the HR sector in general, have you noticed that maybe we should, that you would like to maybe shed light on? Because I think, um, it's interesting that we are here discussing HR, you know, because I see the, I can envision the future of HR in Ghana and I see more and more people showing interest, whether they want to be in the field or just to have relevant conversation about human resource. So what other, I think, HR policies, strategies do you want to share with, with the audience? If you look at the fleet of HR practices, the latest kid on the block is diversity and inclusion. So it's being championed globally, and there are very strong societies to talk about diversity and inclusion. Um, in Africa, especially in Western and Central Africa, and in Ghana particularly, when we scope out diversity and inclusion, it's limited mostly to gender, gender equality or gender equity, how many males and females you have in a company to contribute to the boardroom discussions. You have considering diversity from a religious perspective, from a tribal perspective, and also from a faith perspective. Another consideration is even thinking about people who are handicapped in this country who seem to be relegated to the background. So how do you ensure that in your scoping and bringing out your human capital strategy, you ensure that you can have handicapped people also in the mix? Because they are handicapped, but they're not exactly. disabled in exactly. their thinking. They're not mentally challenged. They can still work. So if somebody has, for example, by accident or by birth, a broken limb or a missing limb, it doesn't affect their brain or their capability to do anything else. And if you watch a lot of videos that are going viral these days, you have so much innovation and creativity with people who are totally handicapped. There are times I get all struck just watching people with one finger, one toe, few fingers, no limbs, and they're wow. doing 
amazing stuff. Wow. Yet in Ghana, they are in the background. In Africa, they are in the background. How do we really bring them to the forefront and get them to contribute? And how do we celebrate them also for how they're able to overcome, you know, all these physical challenges and be able to add so much value to themselves and to society? So diversity and inclusion scopes beyond just gender and faith and language and race and color to include a dimension of people who are physically challenged, you know, to be able to add value to the company the best way they can. Wow. And it's, it's another way of, um, I guess, being an equal opportunity employer, right? Making Absolutely. sure you give everyone a chance. Absolutely. You actually reminded me, so it was a few weeks back where I think I came across this video on the internet. America's Got Talent is a show abroad. And there was a young man by the name of Cody and his mom took him to the show. And you know, he, he, so he started speaking and everyone's like, okay, what can we expect? And then he started singing. I know. You've, I'm sure you've seen that I've video because it went viral. And I just, like, you cannot watch that and get chills. And it just makes you think, oh, my goodness, all this talent. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're all different in our own ways. But like you mentioned, I think we all have so much that we can bring to the table. And if employers open their minds. But I think on the international front, it's probably more accepted than, than maybe here. Um, exactly. But hopefully that'll change. It Hopefully will change. It change. has to change. It, it has to change. Us. It does. It yeah. does. And you've already started, which is amazing. So Thank you. is there anything you want to share with the audience? Where can they get more information about you, what <laughs> you're doing? I'm sure they would love to know. So, I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. My Twitter and Instagram need a private manager. So that's where you just get your next job. <laughs> so I have to revive my Instagram and my Twitter okay. accounts. But I'm on Facebook we very actively. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I think I'm in church every time. I'm yes. all over the place. I'm in my kids' schools. I, I'm all over the place. So you can find me anywhere nice. on these various platforms. Nice. And are there any jobs available now at your place of employment that maybe people should know about so they can apply? We like to give our viewers that opportunity. <laughs> Send me a message in my inbox on LinkedIn and I'll tell you what's available. Well, you've heard it for yourself. So thank you so much for joining us for another episode. And thank you so much, Dr. Hazel, for being our special guest today. We were all really excited to meet with her and then to have this sit down. So thank you to our viewers for tuning in. And of course, we want to thank our sponsors, AH Hotel. We want to thank Nationwide Medical Insurance. And of course, we want to thank Adansi Travels. They actually transported us to here today to be able to have this one-on-one um, this -on -one interaction. So thank you again, and we will see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.